I'm uh, Mark Reader. I've been a musician, record producer, label owner, and I've lived in Berlin since 1978. And uh, now I kind of pendle between the UK and Berlin. And so the, the city's changed immensely in, since, I, since I first came here. Um, it was a grey, dreary outpost and full of desperate musicians and artists and people like clamouring for some kind of identity. And it was also full of like second-rate pop artists, I suppose, and also, also trying to seek recognition and very different to today, you know, like the, the, the city has changed visually as well as, as musically. And that, that happened after the fall of the Berlin Wall. You know, but ba obviously bands like, say, for example, Einstutz and the Neubauten, um, they had a lot of impact, but their impact was very subversive, if you like. You know, like it impacted on bands like Depeche Mode and, and, and label owners like Daniel Miller who came and saw this kind of music and bands like Fat Gadget or whatever. They were impressed by this kind of like band playing load of rubbish. They were very avant-garde. It, it wasn't music in any contemporary sort of style, but it made such a massive impact on bands like Defish Mode, who, who, who utilised the idea of what Norbert was producing and, and created a pop sound version with Gareth Jones. And, you know, the city attracted people like, you know, like U2 at the end of the 80s uh, and people like that because, because of this kind of like image of this broken city, a divided city. Then suddenly the wall was gone and everything was different. It was like suddenly the electronic music scene, which Germany and electronics have always had a kind of like, you know, very close relationship towards each other, you know, like they synthesised the sound of the craft, craft work from Dusseldorf, whatever. It was very, 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 very intense and, and, and the, this, this suddenly was allowed to open the floodgates with the fall of the Berlin Wall, allowed all these young people to, from East Germany mainly, to finally choose a sort of music that they never had the opportunity to do, to do so before, because everything prior to that was state-owned and state-fed. Suddenly they could choose, and it was music with no boundaries, music with no lyrics, and that was techno. And that fueled this Berlin music scene in a way that it never been before. And since then, it's transformed over the, over the last like 20 years into being this really kind of like hub of, of electronic music, more than anything else, you know? the whole hub of electronic music in, in, in Germany. And I think that's a really interesting development over the years. M makes the city much more exciting because people come here now for inspiration, not just electronic musicians either, but ev every kind of musician nowadays. And, that, and, and they discover the city is a very relaxing place to work. It's a very, um, it's, not a, it's not an oppressive place to work. It's not full of like competition all the time. You know, people can work and interact together. And I think that's a really, really refreshing and, and something that I'd always hoped for as well, you know, that's always a, a, my, my idea of what Berlin should have been. I, or in, the, in the 70s, I always had this, ex, if you like, a, a kind of idea that people should come here and see it for themselves and be inspired, you know. And, at that time, when I first came here, and I was like kind of the representative for Factory Records, you know, it was like I, I was promoting a band called Joy Division. Nobody p particularly was interested in this group at all, and it was like very daunting. And so I, I, I turned to these avant-garde German musicians, and nobody was interested in that in England either, so I kind of like swam in the middle until techno came along. Um, the differences today for a young person starting into the music industry is back in the, in the, when I came here in the 70s, I mean, I'd already worked in a record shop prior to coming here uh, in Manchester, and back then we had records, <laughs> vinyl records, uh, and we had a, a, there was a, a mechanism of like, um, you know, you go into a recording studio, you would make that record and then you would sell that record. Whereas today, you, you know, it's a little bit different. You have, you have more, you can do it at home. You don't have to necessarily go into a recording studio. Although that said, you know, it's, it's important that you learn a little bit about how to produce a record because some, some, some music does sound quite all right if it's just made in the home and very, very basic and doesn't have many thrills. But you have to learn the skills of like making what you have in your mind sound the way you want it to really sound. Because most of the time, if you don't, if you, if you don't know how to get there, it'll just sound 
or like for yourself, not so convincing, and you're always kind of like, which in a sense also drives you into it. You know, I think. And so, so, so for a young person, they have to just realise that they, they don't have to go to a casting to to be in the music business. And, you know, that's some kind of image that mo- a lot of young people seem to have these days is that they have to go to some kind of casting to do anything, whereas they should be. You could just do it. I think uh, as a young person starting in the music industry who wants to come to Berlin, I think that the, opp- the opportunities here are much... It's, it's different than in the UK. You've got, a, you know, obviously you've got a language problem. If you, if you don't speak German, you've got to, you know, you've got to immerse yourself a little bit in that. You've got to, because otherwise you'll never understand the way the Germans think. You know, you're coming to a different country, you have to, like understand the mentality a little bit so you so you when you're confronted with that on a daily basis you understand that these people are not being abrasive towards you but it's the way Germans are the communication so you have to learn a little bit about the language that's the probably the only setback for a lot of people is that they they come here and they'll stay here for quite a while but they get fed up with not being able to understand the way the Germans are but once you once you've lock, unlocked that key, uh, the lock, you know the the, the 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 actual living part of it, the being in Berlin, is very easy. It's very cheap. It's very relaxing. There's lots of places to go and you know chill out and be inspired with. There's lots of inspiration here, and actually the the work environments are very inspiring. I think you know the places you can you can say set up. In your studio at home, if you've got if you've got your own setup, you know, if you want to have your own little studio at home, you know, we have very very old houses here where they have very thick walls. You know, like you can make a lot of noise actually in some of these houses, and and your neighbours will never hear that you're even at home, you know, because they're so they're so well constructed. Um, and I find that that, that, that if if you're going to come here as a, as, a, as a young person, you know, you have to find the opportunities. As, uh, there's a lot, of, a lot of other people here also coming to Berlin to make music, so you can bounce off ideas with other people. And it's international, it's a very international, cosmopolitan place now. You know, in the past it wasn't, but now it's more and more young people from all over the world are coming here with the same kind of idea and the same kind of like vision as to what they want to do. And, and I think that rubs off, you know, it inspires and rubs off. And I think, you know, the more, and they're not jaded by having to like go to some kind of like. Uh, casting show to, to, to do it here, you know? You, you, you meet your contemporaries and you meet your, your, your peers and, and it's like you can, you can rub off on each other and I think that is really crazy because that's what Berlin's always been about, really. It's about, it was like a, bit, a little bit like a family of people who kind of like interacted with each other. You'd get bands playing in bands all the time, so, you know, like different members of each band. Uh, Nick Cave coming to Berlin in the, in, in the 80s in the birthday party, suddenly meet Seinstutz and the Neubauten and they create the bad seeds, you know, it's like that kind of thing. And, and I think that is ongoing, it's always like that here in Berlin and I find that really exciting for anyone who was going to come here, is that you come here with maybe not so much but you go away with quite a lot and, and as something like having a school here for like production and how to learn how to make music, not actually make it, play it or whatever, but it's actually create what's in your mind. I think that is a really, really exciting part for Berlin, actually, and I think that is something which, we, we, which you'd have thought the Germans would have come up with in a bigger way, because they're kind of into that kind of thing. But I, th- I feel that in Germany, they tend to fund and look at things in a little bit of a, di- in a different light, and, uh, and, and it's, very, it's quite frustrating sometimes, uh, actually, to, to see people who don't really need it getting it and and the ones that do need it don't have that and I find that is sometimes uh, it needs to be a little bit more balanced you know because Berlin is a city of opportunity I think and it's and, it, and, it, and it's a, the, the the new hub in the middle of Europe for the music industry to come to it's less jaded than the UK it's not as one-sided as the US and um, you have like in the middle between you know everything all around is Europe my favourite my favorite job is actually making records, making songs in the studio, you know, producing, making it. I think that's, you know, that's the, that's the, that's the best part, actually. That's the, the, the rest were just really just to see 
you know, how, how you know, like I was in, in it and I was there at, the mo at that moment. Uh, I didn't really have much of a choice in most of the cases uh, as, to, as to, to, you know, which part of the uh, industry I was going to choose to be in. I didn't sort of go, oh, I want to be a, a manager of a band. I just kind of stepped into this job by someone asking me, can you please be our manager? You know, you, you seem to have like an, an idea about what, where we're going to go and what you, you can do and you've got all these friends that might be able to help. So I kind of got dragged into this and then one thing kind of led to another. Being in, in a manager of one band or being a representative of a, of a band in one place, I ended up being also the support act. <laughs> being in a band, you know, playing myself, which had also been kind of created situation. Someone said, oh, you know, we're doing this gig. Uh, will you play? As, as this representative of this record label, you play, play, oh God, you know, all right, I'll do one off. Christmas, New Year's, closing down of a club, I thought I'll just, I'll just do one off and ended up being in the group then for like a couple of years, you know, going on tours and everything. So I got to see all that aspect as well. And, and, and I feel really privileged. I feel really privileged that I was able to go on all these different tours, experience it live, you know, how it is on stage, how it is with sound monitors, and also do live sound for bands. The horrors of like doing live sound at an open air, you know, I've had some horrific experiences like you would just not imagine, like you can't imagine it, honestly. I was, I was in, 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 in one, one, uh, one little, and I, was, I was in Italy doing malaria, this group, girl, all girl group in, in Italy, and it was in the middle of this piazza in Florence and they'd set this, the mixing desk up on this kind of like scaffold. Look, no, it was no scaffolding. It was like a, like a, a small like column of scaffolding. The mixing desk was right at the top in the middle of this piazza. It was like two o'clock in, in the afternoon, like 45 degrees sun burning down on my head. M doing this, trying to do the sound check in the middle of this, this windy piazza, you know, open air. Finished doing the sound check, which was pretty horrific. Go to the hotel, get changed, get washed. Start to, start to f discover that I've got sunburn and sunstroke, you know. Head's going like this, blasting away. Come back to, the, to this, this thing in the, after, in the evening, in, to the mixing desk, to have this flapping Italian guy telling me that they had a problem in the afternoon and they had to change everything. And they've it's a completely different mixing desk in front of me. And it, there's no lights and they mixed left and right around <laughs> and the monitors on stage were like, I don't know, the guy on the stage was being shot by people. I think it was, it was absolutely horrendous experience, you know, and having to like fight, fight through kind of like these experiences. I think I've been uh, very, very pri unfortunate, but also very privileged to have experienced that as well. And also then also the other things like making a record label, being, being able to make a record label in, in East Germany. You know, that was, um, I feel I've been, I've been very, very privileged, you know, over the years. Just one last little thing. When you sit down and make a track, um, where do you find your inspiration comes from for a track? Is it oh, um, that, difficult to say. You, usually from things like um, my childhood, I think. I find that I, 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 look, I look back into things that I used to admire whether it be books or films or whatever, TV series or something like this. And think, I remember as a kid, you know, watching things like Fireball XL5 and Thunderbirds and stuff like this. You know, the music of the future was always jazz. <laughs> it was always like really, really jazzy. Uh, and, and I was never really into jazz, ever, <laughs> to be honest. But I often think that maybe in the very, very far distant future, maybe jazz music will become the music of the future because people will start, you know, going back, further, further back. Um, for me, music of the future was always synthesizer music. I, I, you know, I was I was exposed at an early age to Wendy Carlos switched on back. It was like the first record I heard in stereo, and it was like God, that's the future. And I kind of like take my inspiration from from things like that, but also from everyday life, you know, politics, whatever, everything, different things. You know, I'm, I'm usually inspired by, you know. The, the lyrics of a song, if, if you like, you know, if, I've got, so if, I, if I'm doing a remix, which I've been doing recently quite a lot of remixes, um, the idea that someone has made a song and it has a specific kind of, speaks to me in some kind of way and I hear automatically, you know, what I want to do with it, you know. So I kind of let my, my feelings kind of take me, really.
and that inspires me, you know. Try and make it sound like a film soundtrack <laughs> as much as possible. <laughs> yeah, because I'm into film music, so.